The world is massive, and as a planet, Earth is pretty big. But when you look at the whole solar system, is it as big as we think it is, you know, compared to the other planets? I'm a visual person, and when I hear that the diameter of the Earth is 12,742 kilometres, this doesn't make that much sense to me. So, I've brought in some help. Mark, how are you going? Good, mate, how are you? Now, you're a particle physicist. What exactly is that? Well, a particle physicist studies the universe, from the tiniest particles to the whole universe itself. Sweet, so I've come to the right place. So where do we get started? Ooh, hey, 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 wait, wait. They're not for eating. It's my solar system. Mark, I didn't think I was the expert here. Didn't anyone tell you that you can't eat the planets in the solar system? Well, Nate, you wanted to see how the size of the Earth compared to the other planets, right? So what I've done is I've scaled everything down to things I had at home so we can see how the planets relate to each other in size. I like the way you think, you know? Delicious food, planets, eating. So the solar system is huge. So huge, in fact, that it's really hard to understand its scale with everyday objects. Like, for instance, it, say the sun was a five-cent coin on the tri-line of a footy field, the Earth would be a grain of sand about two metres away. Jupiter would be ten metres away and smaller than a peppercorn, and Pluto would be right down the other end and almost impossible to see. Poor the like, lonely little Pluto. Right, so to make our solar system have the planets the right size and the right distance apart and still be able to see them, we need a heap of room. What? Even more room than this field? Even with this much room, we'd still probably need to get into a car and drive to the next suburb to see how far away the planets are. So the best we can do is actually look at two separate aspects of the solar system. The first is how big the planets are relative to each other, and the second is how far apart they are relative to the sun. OK, but I think I need you to break it down for me. No worries, Nate, that's what I'm here for. Why don't we get our fruit and vegetables and make ourselves a solar system? Perfect. And a smoothie later? Sure. All right, so let's start with putting the planets in order from the sun. So what, the sun doesn't revolve around Earth? No, <laughs> so it's the clues in the name, solar, as in sun. And uh, believe it or not, you know, we can be pretty selfish, but the sun doesn't revolve around us. Everything actually revolves around the sun. So the sun is huge. I don't mean just a little bit bigger than the Earth, but you could actually fit over a million Earths inside the sun. Do we have anything big enough to show that? No, unfortunately. Keeping in mind that we're not to scale, we're going to use this bunch of lemons here to represent our sun in our food-themed solar system. Sweet, sounds good to me. So let's start with the first planet from the sun, which is Mercury. And we're going to represent it with the P. Oh, we could call it Mercury P, get it? Because it's a P, so why don't I put that? That's terrible. Put it right next to the sun there. It's a bit warm there, buddy. So our next planet out is Venus, and we're going to represent that with the grape. Grape. So that's this one here. So that goes around here. Next to Mercury. Yep. So our home planet Earth is represented by a cherry tomato here in our solar system. And the moon is about the same size as a corn kernel. So up next is Mars, and we're representing that with a blueberry. Oh, it's an alien. <laughs> now up next is Jupiter, which is pretty big. So we're going to represent it with a watermelon. Oh, get that one in there. there Watch out other planets, you want that little roll on you. So after that, still pretty big is Saturn. Here we have a pumpkin for that. Then next up is Uranus, which is going to be represented with a grapefruit. And then we have an orange to represent Neptune. And now, even though we don't consider it a planet anymore, we'll include Pluto, and it's about the size of a peppercorn. Well, what? They don't include it anymore? Not anymore. Why not? They're, they're uh, it's too now. small. Oh. It's too small. Yeah. Oh, poor Pluto! It's so small! I know. It's actually the same size as the distance from Sydney to Cairns, so pretty small. Wow, so that's our solar system. Yeah, so that's our solar system when everything is scaled down. But we still have part two of our solar system recreation to do, which is where we look at the distances of the planets for the sun. But this time, the planets won't be to scale. Sweet! That's coming up later on Get Clever. Previously on Get Clever, my particle physicist friend Mark here helped me figure out how big the planets in our solar system actually are. And we had to scale it down a lot because our solar system is huge. It is huge. And in fact, the sun is so huge that we couldn't even fit a scale version of it in our model. And the best thing about our scale was it was delicious because it was made out of fruit and veg. Now that I've got my head around how big the planets are, I want to figure out how far they are from the sun away. Yeah, great. So the planets and the sun are millions of kilometres apart from each other. And we have an oval here that's of just over 100 metres. So we need to scale everything down so we can fit in this area and we can see how far apart they are relative to each other. This is going to take some serious scaling. We might need to ask a few extra hands for help. Good idea, but how are we going to do this? Your planet. Planet. Oh, plan, and then the it, planet. Okay, get a, yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah, so I brought in Faye and Jackie to help us out with making them. What's up, girls? Hi. Hi. Sounds good. So Faye and I are going to make some models of each planet. So do we need to make the planets as realistic as possible? Yeah, please. Okay. You and I are going to get our measuring tapes and start measuring out these distances. Sweet, measuring tapes. And Faye and Jackie, what's your plan? 
I've been doing some research into all of the planets and I'm thinking that if I put some information together on what they look like and why, then you can show us how to make them. Okay, so we have quite a few planets to make, right? Eight to be exact. All right. Well, we definitely have our work cut out for us, but I have a few little helpers. Let's go, team! All right, Nate, so up until now, we've looked at the difference in sizes of the planets, but now we need to look at the other part of our solar system and work out how far the planets are away from the sun. Now, we've got all this space. Do you reckon we can fit it in within 100 metres? Yeah, definitely. We'll just need to crunch the numbers. OK, so starting with Mercury, how far away from the sun is it? Well, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, and that's still almost 58 million kilometres away. So that's like driving around Australia almost 4,000 times. It'll take a lifetime to get there. So you're going to need a lot of petrol and a heap of card games for that trip. That's right. But on our solar system, we've scaled everything down. So Mercury will be about one metre on our scale. So the planets also orbit around the sun. So we also need to measure that distance around the sun in a circle where the orbit will take place. So a whole lot of circles. Now, because we've only got this football field to fit in the whole solar system for our scale, one metre is going to be equal to 57,900,000 kilometres? That's right. OK, guys, we're ready for Mercury! Have you heard the term supernova? No, it's not a kind of superhero. It's actually a massive stellar explosion caused by the death of a star. Like all living things, stars have a life cycle and have a lifetime before dying. A star has to be really big to go supernova, at least eight times bigger than our own sun. Big stars only shine for a few million years, whereas our sun has lasted billions of years. That's a lot of birthdays. Previously on Get Clever, I assembled an intergalactic space team to help me recreate the solar system. Now, Mark and I are working out how far the planets are away from the sun, while Jackie and Faye make some planets and find out a little more. So, we're going to start with Mercury, which is the closest planet to the sun. It's actually really, really hot on Mercury. Imagine a hot summer's day and times that by 100 because it's 400 degrees Celsius. Well, that's pretty warm. And Mercury looks like our moon, so I'm going to use this polystyrene ball, punch in a few craters and paint it grey with little bits of white. So next up is Venus, and that's the second planet from the sun. And it's even hotter than Mercury because it can get up to 470 degrees Celsius. Astronomers say that it's a pale yellow colour. So I'll make Venus by painting this pale yellow. And as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than Mercury. OK, we've got our first planet. Who's next? Next is uh, Venus, which is 108,160,000 kilometres away from the sun. But on our scale, that's two metres. OK, two metres. So, I'll, of course, I'll measure that out again. Oh, OK, I know the next one. It's Earth. That's so right, yeah. How far away from the sun is that? Earth is 149,600,000 kilometres from the sun, or on our scale, about three metres. So that's one metre from Venus. That's right. I'm going to need some help. Kira, can you hold this for me? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to need you to hold that on Venus there. Guys, cover your ears. Dr. Jackie! Is Earth ready yet? Coming! All right, so next up is Mars, which is about 228 million kilometres away from the sun. Wow! That is, in our terms... About four metres. Four metres. So a planet that we're all familiar with, which is Earth, and like Mercury and Venus, it's a rocky planet. But from space, we know that it looks blue, green and a bit white. Well, I'll do Earth by painting in the oceans and the continents and a few dappled white clouds. OK, Mars is next. And it's the planet that we think humans are most likely to inhabit one day. But it's only one sixth of the size of Earth and it's known as the red planet. Awesome! I have the perfect thing to make Mars red. Red paint. As you can see, a lot smaller than Earth. That's looking great. Got Mark and Kira here who are helping me work out how far the planets are away from the sun. Plus, we've got Jackie and Faye working on actually making the planets. What planets have we already got here? Well, so far we have Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. 
I'm a little bit confused. Is Earth really that small? Well, remember, Nate, we weren't actually making these planets to scale. If this was really to scale, Earth would be about the size of a grain of sand. So Jackie and Faye have made the planets this size so we can actually see them. OK, so what planet's next? Next come the gas giants. So the next is Jupiter, at almost 780 million kilometres away from the Sun, which is 13 metres on our scale. And after that comes Saturn, which is almost 1.5 billion kilometres away from the Sun, which is 24 metres on our scale. Hear us, guys. Jackie, take your time with Jupiter. It's going to take us a while here. So Jupiter's up next, and it's the first of our gas planets. And we're not really sure if it's got a solid surface or not. We think it's mostly made up of swirling gases and liquids. This one might be tricky to make, though, Jackie, but it's pretty with orange and white bands. Well, Faye, I love a challenge. But I've already done a bit of prep on Jupiter. I've got an exercise ball and I've sprayed some orange bands on. But to make it look really gassy, I'm going to use some cushion stuffing and glue it on like clouds. Next up is a planet that we all recognise because of its rings. Can anybody guess? Saturn. Yes, it's Saturn. Now, it's also a gas planet, and we think it's a goldy colour with the biggest rings in the solar system. Whoa. And it also has 53 moons. Well, I've got some good ideas for that. I've spray-painted a basketball in gold and yellow, and for the rings, I've spray-painted a hula hoop silver. Cool. <laughs> Jupiter's orbit. So, uh, Mark, what's next? Up next, Uranus is about 2 billion 600 million kilometres away from the Sun. On our scale, that's about 46 metres. And Neptune is about 4 billion 500 million kilometres away from the Sun, which on our scale is 49 metres. There's Neptune. Up next is the planet that always cops a lot of jokes. Uranus! Let's get to the bottom of it. <laughs> OK, I'm not even going to go there with the jokes. Tell me about Uranus. Well, it's a giant ice planet, but it's actually got 27 moons, and it's a pale blue colour. Awesome. Well, I have spray-painted a bouncy ball, still dry, in pale blue and a few green stripes, because it kind of looks green from far away too. OK, so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planets. There's got to be one more, right? Yep, and then our solar system is complete. Yay, all right, what is it? Neptune, another ice planet, and it's nine times the size of Earth, and it's also blue. Great, well, I'm just going to paint this polystyrene ball a nice deep blue colour. Awesome. Now our solar system's complete, and it's looking pretty good to me. OK, so now they're done, let's let them dry, and then we can take them over to Mark and Nathan. Only about 5% of the universe is made up of things that we can see, like planets and stars. So what's the rest of the black stuff? It's called dark energy and dark matter. Dark matter is an invisible substance. We're not really sure what it's made up of, but we know it's there. Dark energy makes up the rest of the universe. This energy works in opposition to gravity and causes the universe to speed up its expansion. Again, we don't really know what it's made up of, but we can study the effects of it. Hi, I'm Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. I'm a little under half as big as the Earth, and I'm the smallest planet in the solar system. I have no moons and no rings. Mercury is named after the messenger of the Roman gods, because I'm super fast. Hi, I'm Venus, and I'm the second planet from the Sun. I'm next to Earth and about the same size. I have no moons and no rings. It's thought by some that Venus was Earth's twin. Billions of years ago, I had oceans too. But I got too hot and it all boiled away. Hi, I'm Earth. I have vast blue oceans, green, yellow, white and brown lands. I'm the third planet from the sun and I have one moon. I have millions of different kinds of life, from animals to plants to humans. 
I'm not too hot and I'm not too cold. I'm your home. I'm Mars. I'm the fourth planet from the sun and about half the size of Earth. I'm also called the red planet because I'm covered in red soil. I have two moons and one day humans might live on me. Hi, I'm Jupiter and I'm the biggest planet in the solar system. And when I mean big, I mean huge. I was named after the king of gold in old Roman stories. I am one of the brightest stars in Earth's sky. More than 1,300 Earths can fit inside me and I have 60 moons. Boom! Hi, I'm Saturn, the pretty one with amazing wings spinning around my planet. I'm the second biggest planet and the sixth planet from the sun. I have at least 53 moons and possibly more. I'm made up mostly of gas and I don't have a solid surface. Hi, I'm Uranus. I'm the seventh planet. I'm also called the ice planet. I got 27 moons and I got 13 no rings. I was named of the great god of the sky. I'm an amazing blue color. I was mostly made of ice. Hi, I'm Neptune. I'm the eighth and last planet in the solar system. No! I'm so far away from Earth, I can't be seen without a telescope. I'm blue, I have six rings and 39 moons. I'm named after the Roman god of the sea. Great job, Kira, you're Jupiter, go stand in line. All right, guys, we've got our planets all measured out and in place. They look great, girls. Thanks! I made a solar system today! Yeah, and all the kids know which planets they are and where they need to be. I think it's time to see the planets orbit around the sun. Before we do that, do they all orbit at the same speed? Not quite, Nath. All the planets orbit at different speeds. Mercury orbits the fastest and also spins on its spot. <laughs> Venus is the second fastest orbiting planet. Weirdly, it spins the opposite direction on its axis. And another weird one is Uranus, which is actually tilted on its side and almost rolls along its orbit. And Neptune is the slowest orbiting planet. And can you see the pattern here? The closer you are to the sun, the faster you orbit. Yeah. I'm gonna go in the middle and be the sun. Good idea. I'm gonna go and get my drone, set it up so we can get a really cool high shot. Well, it looks like Neptune's got a pretty far way to run. I think I might run for her. And, uh, and I'll run for Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys, let's go. Let's go. It looks like there's been a catastrophic event and some of the planets have given up on the job. Or maybe they just need snacks. Oh, well, we didn't really have the longest orbits. Yeah, but how cool is it? We've got our very own solar system. It's pretty cool. Great job, everyone. I think we should just chill here on the edge of the solar system. Good plan. While you guys keep on running. Good work. Hey, Earth, you know, kick it up a notch. As you can see, the planets are extremely far away from each other and stars even further away. And with all that space in between them, do stars and planets ever run into each other? It's extremely rare. The gravitational pull of the star at the centre of our solar system usually keeps them apart, but it does happen. In 2017, astronomers detected the crash of two neutron stars into each other. The extreme energy of this explosion created new elements, like gold and silver. Now that's my kind of bleed. 